Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, really excited to, uh, to hear this series on uh, emotional health, emotional well-being. Uh, you know, I, I've spent um, my entire career uh, working in mental health care, uh, helping a lot of people um, with their emotional health. And, uh, you know, when I was, I was talking to Russ and uh, I started thinking about over the past year, a little over a year, uh, I actually had to do a lot of work on my own emotional health. And uh, I, I thought I would just kind of share a little bit what the, what the past year, year and a half has been like for me and my family. So th at the end of this month, it will be 20 years that Aaron and I have lived in Tennessee. You know, over the course of those years, uh, I really started kind of checking the boxes of things that are supposedly there to make us feel successful. Um, had a great wife, uh, three great kids came along, uh, and the career started to grow. Uh, and through the course of that career growth, I was really able to uh, do the things that I loved, uh, which doesn't happen for a lot of people, and I, I'm grateful for that. But I was also able to, to help people, or feel like I was helping people, uh, which has kind of always been something I felt called to do. About 15 years into that career, um, I was approached with an opportunity to uh, take on a new role. Uh, it would entail leaving the organization that I had always worked for and uh, taking a new, a new role up in Franklin. Uh, so, you know, I did what I always did. I came home, I talked with Aaron, we prayed about it, talked with, with friends, um, and ultimately decided that it was, it was a good move. Uh, so I jumped in and about 2018, uh, made the move up there. And uh, prior to taking on this role, I talked, had long talks with Aaron and explained to her, uh, you know, probably six months, it's, it's gonna take uh, a lot of my time. It's gonna take a lot of my focus. Uh, before I really get comfortable in the role. That had been my previous experience anytime there was a, a job change. And what I found is those six months blew by and the days kept getting longer and longer and longer. And it was more weekends. And it wasn't just busy when I was at work. It was busy when I was at home too. Uh, home life is something that I had historically been pretty protective of. In, in subtle ways, it started showing up that the job was taking too much. You know, it was missing a band concert. It was missing a golf match. Um, all of those things to the point that it became the expectation for my kids. Uh, the dad just wasn't probably not going to be there. Um, and that's uh, something that, that was new to me. Uh, I've always tried to be involved with things that are going on with the kids, be present at home. Uh, and I really wasn't able to do that anymore. You know, we had a, we had a pool put in at the house uh, a couple of years ago. And the first summer that the pool was in at the house, uh, I was able to get in it twice. Every other time we would have a family day planned, hang out in the pool and dad would get a call that ended up instead of being five minutes, it lasted an hour. Uh, so by the time dad was ready to swim, everybody else was done. That's a lot of weight. It's, it's a lot of guilt. Um, and I was feeling all of it. Uh, the work was harder and unlike anything I had ever done before. And then COVID came. Uh, to all of my fellow healthcare workers, hats off to you. It's hard work on the best day, and COVID is certainly not the best day. In the summer of 2020, we had plans to go out of state for, for vacation. Uh, those plans got changed because of COVID. So we rented a house on the lake uh, and invited my parents to come. And I can remember sitting outside with my dad one day uh, even through vacation, the phone kept ringing every day, every day. My dad, who is uh, one of the wisest people I've ever met, he looked at me after I took taken my third or fourth phone call, and he just said, buddy, said, you're looking old. And I said, well, thanks. And he said, no, he said, this job, he said, it's not good for you. Uh, so that was in July of 2020. And over the course of the next several months, uh, work was getting to the point uh, I felt more and more pressure uh, every day. It was more and more pressure. Uh, I was no longer sleeping well. I was certainly not present at home. Uh, I felt like I was checking all of the boxes that were not successful. I was not a great husband. I was not a good dad. I was uh, not a great Christian. Uh, I was an elder at this church 
and I had to make the decision to step away from that for a while. And uh, I felt like this, this job was taking all of the things from me that I wasn't willing to give up. For the last couple of months uh, of, of 2020, uh, on my drives into work in the morning, uh, if I was not actively talking to someone on the phone in the car, uh, I was crying in the car, uh, which is totally out of character for me. Uh, I uh, usually don't display my emotions quite so much, um, but it was it was brutal. You know, I frequently would talk to my sister on the phone in the mornings, and uh, she would even tell me. She said, "You you sound miserable." Uh, family's good at that. They'll they'll tell you exactly like it is. And then uh, in December of 2020, uh, I was driving to work one day, and I stopped and got a, a diet coke and a pack of mints, and I put a mint in my mouth and I could not taste it. And I took a drink of the Coke and I could not taste it. So I called our infection control nurse and she said, no, you have to go get, get tested for COVID. Uh, my whole family got COVID. Um, I try in, in every aspect of my life to try to find a kind of silver lining in, in every situation. Uh, sometimes it's hard. Uh, looking back, uh, COVID was the thing that forced me to stay home from work. Uh, the phone calls still came, but it was to the point, uh, my whole family, we spent a lot of time together. Uh, and that's something I had not been present for two and a half years. One day, uh, while we were, when we were starting to feel a little better, uh, Jackson and I played cards. We played a lot of cards and we watched a lot of TV during that time. Uh, Jackson and I were, were playing cards at the table and he just offhandedly said, you know, you only have two years left with me. And I, I thought, that can't be right. Uh, but it was. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Jackson's plan is to go into the military after high school. Uh, so he was absolutely right. And I finished the, the game of cards and I went to the bedroom and I sat on the bed and I literally sobbed uh, because I have two years left with this kid and I'm missing all of it. My wife is the most supportive person that I could ever imagine. She talked with me, she prayed with me. Uh, at the end of that conversation, I told her, this has to stop. Um, so I made the decision to resign. That was a hard decision because I was resigning from a job even though I hated it and it wasn't, it wasn't healthy for me. I had no idea what I was gonna do next. That can cause some anxiety a little bit. Uh, but I knew that I couldn't keep doing this. Um, so I made the decision, uh, I let, let my employer know that I was, I was gonna resign. Um, and things were very contentious when I returned back to work. Uh, it wasn't, um, wasn't a very pleasant experience uh, since they knew that I was, I was leaving. On New Year's Eve, I had gone to work that day and I already had my things from my office in a box and I just carried him out to the car that day. And when I sat down, I, I made the decision, I'm, I'm not coming back to do this anymore. Um, it, it was to the point, uh, I just, I physically couldn't make myself go back. I informed uh, my employer that I would not be returning. But on my way home that day, I got a call from an old coworker of mine and uh, who works uh, with the state now. And she told me, she said, hey, she said, you got a minute? I said, yeah. She said, I, I want you to come work with me. Um, and that's what happened. Uh, I was able to return to doing work that I love and, and getting help out to people that really are, are in need of assistance. And it's meaningful work. And that's, that's what I was super excited about. I get to work with the most amazing team every day and, and really, uh, get back to enjoying work because there's a balance there. Uh, at the end of the day, um, I'm present at home. I'm not exhausted. I'm not stressed to the point that I can't focus anymore. You know, through through that whole process of of leaving, and, and it was a few months of me not being employed. You know, Erin Aaron kept telling me, uh, she said, I, I'm at peace with this. She said, the word trust keeps coming in my mind. And that's what we did. We had to, to trust that God had a better plan, uh, and certainly that was the case. Uh, but it, it took getting to a point 
of just being completely broken uh, and recognizing that it's okay to not keep climbing that ladder, to not keep striving for more. Uh, it's okay to be content with where we are in life and uh, keep those priorities in check.